And it's Victor Smith, statisticians Paul Evans and Brian Taylor. Coming out, the first man introduces Dana Barros, 5'11", 163. Boy, he's a good one out of Boston College in his sixth year. At the other guard, a guy they just acquired. He's been around the league, Jeff Grayer, Iowa State, 6'5", guard. In the middle, here is Sharon Wright. It's pronounced Sharon Wright, Clemson, 6'11", 262. Up front, a kid from California, went to North Carolina, played two years with the Chicago Bulls. His name is Scott Williams. And at the other forward, a real good third-year man, Clarence Weatherspoon out of Southern Mississippi. The head coach, Johnny Lucas, in his third year, actually has been in the league 14 years. Ron Adams and Maurice Cheeks. Tom Thibodeau and Mike Edbenauer is the trainer for the Lakers. I apologize. I didn't introduce Del Harris, head coach, Billy Burke, Larry Drew, Michael Cooper, and uh, Kurt Rambis. And uh, the trainer is Gary Beatty. We're high above the western sideline. A little bit lower than at the Great Western Farm. A little bit. The referees, good ones. Greg Willard, Ron Garrison on the right, and Mark Wonderlich. Southwest Airlines proud to bring you the starting lineup. First, the Lakers, Campbell and Sabalas at the forward positions, Vladdy in the middle, and Jones and Van Exel in the backcourt. And for the Philadelphia Sixers, thank you very much, Jane. Weatherspoon and Williams up front, right in the middle, and Barros, and uh, it's actually pronounced Barros, and Grayer in the backcourt. Well, in the last 18 games, the Lakers are 13 and 5. Conversely, the 76ers are 3 and 15. So if the Lakers, I think, jump out on them early, take their confidence away, they'll be in great shape. Otherwise, we'll have a tough game. Van Exel, in his last five games, averaging 29 points as I round out the numbers and 10 assists. Unbelievable. This kid is making a name for him, as you said, around the world. Yeah, he, he's some kind of talent, and you know what, Chick? He Campbell up, tips it, and then volleyed it by Van, uh, by Blotty to Van Exel. Outside jumper, good three-pointer, I believe. Did they only yeah. allow him two? No, three. They should give him three, and they did. Yeah, Sabalos hit it. And Sabalos picks up where he left off last night with 31 points. The ball goes in low, handling it inside. And they the ball stolen. Jones gives the ball to Van Exel. Van Exel underneath. Bad pass. Can't be handled by Campbell. Van Exel's mad at Van Exel. But that's the right idea. The pass was just a little bit off the mark, but Nick was surveying the floor again, and he spotted Eldon Campbell, who in the last game ran the floor as well as I've ever yep. seen him run it. Really did. Barros with the ball. Barros with the ball. Weatherspoon. Out of front, they clear it off once more, giving it this time to Jeff Grayer. He's a pretty good outside shooter. There's a four shot, and he puts it in, and that's Weatherspoon. Nice shot. That's normally the one you miss when you don't get the whistle, and then you're looking over at your coach talking about, well, I got foul. Three to two. Jones takes the ball in low to Campbell, posting up against Williams, turns and shoots over him and makes a little hook shot. Nice shot. About a five, six footer. And the Lakers lead five to two after a minute of play. With the ball, Barrows coming along this, the western sideline. Yo-yoing up and down, gets a screen by Weatherspoon. Pick and roll didn't work. Now they get it to Weatherspoon at the base. His second shot of the game is no good. The rebound is off, grabbed in there, and held on to nicely. Uh -oh. And here's the ball outside the barrel. He hits him. You can't let him have the ball. He'll bury you with it. Nice rebound by Scott Williams. Set it up. Barrows now has made 83 three-pointers this year. 83. And from that area, he's shooting 48%. Van Exel tries an outside jumper that didn't go. And we're tied at five on the simulcast in the front court. Here comes Barrows again. He doesn't put it up too often. 48% from three, 51% for two. Jump shot at the baseline put up, and it wouldn't go in for Scott Williams. Unrestricted free agent came from Chicago. Here goes Jones down the middle all the way. The kid from Temple blows it. Flotty rebounded in. One more dribble was what Eddie Jones needed. He picked up his dribble one dribble too soon, and that made him have to glide and miss the shot. If he dribbled one more, he makes it. That's one he wanted so badly, and so did his mom, who's here with about 49 other people. Weatherspoon's got it. The Lakers up by two. Here's the ball over the far sideline. Grayer, as I told you, can hit the outside jumper, and he did. Number one pick of Milwaukee back in 88. Tore up a leg. His 
rookie year. Then he went to Golden State for two years. Campbell's got it in a tie football score. 7-7. Seven, seven. Campbell turns, shoots, misses from about 13 feet. The rebound is off. And the big man, Sharon Wright, got it. Barrows again for three. That's no good. Campbell's got it inside. Both of those guys, Campbell and Sharon Wright, attended Clemson. Different years, of course. Here's the ball over. Three-point shot again. Sabalos hits again. Sabalos is two for two from three. And Sabalos on the year now has made 24 out of 63. You know, any perimeter shot, it seems, in the NBA these days, but the shortened distance is going to be a three-pointer. And uh, Cedric taking full advantage of it. Weatherspoon with the ball. Weatherspoon out in front above the three-point line. Weatherspoon's in his third year. Stop his two-point shot on the way. That's not close. Rebound off. Lottie wanted it, but he didn't get it because Sharon Wright did. Comes out. He didn't travel. He walked his way to the basket. He also did a good job of body and Vlade, too. Vlade's going to have to be a little stronger under there and to hold his position. Wright is listed at 262, and he looks much heavier than that. Looks much heavier. 10-7, to 7, the Lakers lead it. And here with the ball, bad exit. Takes it over to Sabala. Dribble drive. Beats Weatherspoon. Tries to pass, and Weatherspoon fouled him. Boy, what a quick pass off the dribble by Cedric as he went baseline hitting Vlade, but the whistle sounded ball out of bounds to the Lakers. That was just a quick step, quick pass by Cedric. Our floor director for television is Becky Solomon, and she does a great job. Now the ball in the front court. Sabalas dribble drive around Weatherspoon, spins it up no good, but he was fouled, will shoot to. I'll tell you, that first step of his yeah. right now is as fluid as I've seen it since he joined the Lakers. And as an offensive player, Chick, that's how you beat the defender. If you can't beat him with the first step, you're going to have a lot of difficulties. That first step, the one that sometimes it's an elongated step and it has to be quick, gets you to the basket. Cedric, 71% from the line this season. I'm not taking anything away from Weatherspoon, who's a great offensive player, but his defense, according to the scouting reports, is suspect, and they're going right at him, aren't they? That's the smart thing to do. Both free throws are good by Sabalos. Last night, he made seven out of nine three point, uh, free throws. The Lakers have the biggest lead of the game, five points. The Lakers trapping now. The ball goes over to Weatherspoon underneath. Nice pass to Greer, who makes a bank shot with the right hand. Nice play. They really broke the trap. Yeah, as soon as they got the ball in the middle, the trap was broken. And here's Sabalos with it. He's got Weatherspoon going crazy. He's dribbling against Weatherspoon. Stops. Tries to shoot over, and Weatherspoon says, I'll show you, and he blocked the shot. Great defense by Weatherspoon. Here comes Barrows. Barrows lobbed it in deep. Great pass. Rim high. Caught by Weatherspoon, who scores. And now, of course, Sabalos isn't the greatest defender in the world, either. <laughs> Well, this that uh, the NBA is that uh, full of those, so it's no big deal. So the Lakers give up four points in a row, and they lead by one. We got Eddie Jones with it. He shoots from outside. He drills it for three. Eddie Jones with the greatest of his. He gets that shot off so smoothly. Because he has now made 42. He keeps it high over his head, and he's six six. Dribble drive, Barrows, and a foul is on Van Exel. Personal ball to come out of bounds. What so often happens when you're trying and getting ready to run pick and roll, the defender guarding the guy dribbling the ball gets so concerned about the screen that you can go baseline or go opposite the screen. Eddie Jones on his last shot, nothing but net. All right, back to the action. This one's got it. Around Vladi with the greatest of ease goes the rookie Sharon Wright. Man, he went by Vladi like he was nailed to the floor. Well, you cannot always, uh, most of the time, you can't let an offensive player feel the pressure at the low post. If he catches there, then you've got to give him a little separation. 14, make it 15 to 13, the score is a dribble drive by Jones underneath. Puts it up and in and a bank shot in traffic. He beat Grayer badly for his fifth point. 17 to 13, the Lakers. And now the Lakers go on defense with Burroughs, the guy they got to stop, out in front to Weather Spoon. Down the middle, they give the ball off, and a jump shot underneath by Grayer. He looks good. He's made all three shots he's tried. Grayer on the year. Well, how good a shooter is he? He's 34%, so he's a little over his head. The ball to Campbell, turn, goes in the air, throws up an eight-foot in the air, tipped in accidentally. No, I think Cedric Sabalas purposely, we mean accidentally. Boy, he really slapped that ball and went right in the hole. Gives Sabalas his 10th point already. Here's the ball down the middle. Underneath, baskets no good. Offensive foul called against Scott Williams. 6'10", 230 pounder. He was never drafted, signed as a free agent by Chicago, played there four years, and he got himself three championship rings. Then he moved on, and uh, now, right now, he's with the 76ers, and the 76ers are trailing the Lakers by four. It's 19-15 Lakers on the Lakers Basketball Network.
Well, shooting in the game, the Lakers have made 7 out of 12 shots, 58%. The 76ers, 7 out of 11, 64%. Vladi has been struggling in the last couple of games. He played 58 minutes in those two games total and had only six rebounds. Uh, that's an hour's worth of playing time. He's out of the game now. Bowie comes in to replace him. Lakers lead is four. Van Exel bounced the ball over to Sabalas, who fumbles it. You give the ball off, and here they go on a fast break for a slam dunk by Sharon Wright. And that's what will happen with turnovers. They make you pay on a turnover, it seems, every time. 19 to 17, the Lakers are in front. Van Exel takes the ball over to Jones. He's got four points, five points. In low to Campbell, comes underneath, and missed the rim from two feet. It did hit the backboard. The rebound comes off to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon gives to Averroes. That's what we tell you about clubs like this. They might have lost 10 out of 11, but they're out here to show the home fans they can win. Averroes dribbles around the pick. No pick and roll this time. He fires for three, and he got his second of the night. But that's the thing about him. Is you, he's a shooting point guard, so you can't afford to go behind the screens because if you do, he'll stop behind it. That's their first lead, 20 to 19. The Lakers gave up now a total of uh, six in a row. Dribble drive Van Exel. Brings it out in front to Jones. Dribbles across the mouth to Key. Goes down the middle, feeds it into Bowie. He's away from Sharon Wright. Puts it up and missed it. Rebound is off. Bowie wants it. Bowie had it temporarily. And what do we got called? Foul. Foul is going to be called against the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, that, brings, on Williams. that brings uh, Big Sean Bradley off the bench. Seven foot six as Sam Bowie goes up for the dunk. Has it blocked from behind somewhat, but stays after it. Gets fouled by Scott Williams. Into the game, Sean Bradley. Seven feet and six inches tall. He weighs 248. He played one year at BYU, then went on a mission for two years. Three-pointer again by Sabalas. He has now got 13 points, and we've only played six minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> 13 points from three-point land. He's three for three. Barros has got two made tonight. Barros is very quick. He's given Van Exel fits out there like Van Exel will give him. Now the ball to Grayer. He fires for two. He's on the line. Shot no good. The rebound is off to Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones grew up here in Philadelphia. He says, I'm coming back here when it's all over. Let's see after he lives in L.A. for 10 years. Dribble drive underneath. Campbell shot no good. Might have been fouled before he went into the act of shooting. Yeah, that's a one-shot foul. I don't know if Eldon thinks he's going to shoot free throws. No, he doesn't because he's not. As uh, Cedric Zabalas takes the ball out on the sideline. All right, the ball is brought into Van Exel. Van Exel looking for somebody to give it to. The 76ers are out of fouls. Here's the pass out in front. Jones for another three. That's too long. Rebound is off. Bowie hits it. And out of bounds it goes off the hand of. They, try, they tried to get it. Sharon Wright. Reset to 24. 4.32 to play in the first quarter. Los Angeles by two. Here's the ball into Jones. Jones out in front to Campbell. Campbell above the three to Van Exel. He fires for three. He did not get it. Rebound is off and it's taken in there by Sharon Wright. He's an impressive rookie. Yeah, he did That's a good job of boxing out yes, Bowie that time. Sure did. Weatherspoon drives the base. He gets in trouble. He feeds a great pass and they put it up and it bounces off no good. Here's a foul though on the second effort and they'll go to the line. Grayer almost got that one home. Well, Sharon Wright was right there to get the offensive rebound. Eldon Campbell tried to make the defensive play but kicks up the foul. That's going to send Wright to the line for two. I agree with Paul Evans, our great statistician who works with Brian Taylor. Paul says that Wright reminds him a lot. His hips and so forth, the way he uses them, Moses Malone. Yeah, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I agree as well. Good observation. He's in the league as long as Moses was at the wages of today. <laughs> <laughs> He'll own a team soon. He'll own Clemson. The free throws. One good, one no good. The rebound is off to Bowie on the miss. Van Exel front court. He's on the three-point line. Shot no good. Rebound is off to Campbell. Comes in low. Bank shot. That's no good. Rebound Campbell wanted. it. Can't get it because Bradley does. Big Bradley at seven feet and six inches. Give the ball off to a new guard in there now. Coming down quickly and get the ball to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon dribble drive down the middle. Throws it up. No good. The rebound is off and is taken by Sabalas. It's a four on three ahead to Bowie. He should ride it home. Slam dunk. Yeah. Great play by Bowie. 33 years old. I would think he rode that one home. <laughs> I would say so too. B.J. Tyler is the man that they just brought into the ballgame. He's a rookie out of the University of Texas. 20th player picked in the draft. Here's the ball underneath. And a nice play under that. He missed his shot, but it's put up and in by Bradley. As Sharon Wright missed it, Bradley followed it home. Well, nobody boxed out Sean Bradley. He had a running start. Van Exel dribble drive. Van Exel down the middle. He is hitting foul. That's free throw time. 
Bradley says, I didn't touch him. And Van Exel looked at Bradley and says, how do you know I'm so far down here you didn't see me? <laughs> I don't know how Sean Bradley saw him as well, but on the last play by the 76ers, Bradley, he saw the play as Sam Bowie made a nice run of the court and got rewarded with two easy ones. Van Exel has got four assists already in the ball game. He's looking for his first point. He's nothing for three shooting. The free throw is good. Let me tell you a little story about last night's heroics at the end of the game where he made the three pointer. He had missed five straight three point shots up to that point, and he threw that one in from distance. Free throw is good this time. And the Lakers have a two-point lead, hardly putting this team away. Here we go with B.J. Tyler. He's 6'1", 185, just a rookie. Dribbling double team with the ball out in front to Sharon Wright. Give and go. Gives it back to Tyler, but he didn't go to the hole. Comes in underneath, throws the ball out of bounds. At midcourt, the Lakers will take it. Well, that was the B.J.'s fault all the way. When he got the ball back, he dribbled right to the corner. And when teams are trapping, that's the one place you never want to go. And he went there on his own. Vladi is back in the ball game for the Lakers, and Jones goes out. But Vladi didn't come in yet. Of the Lakers only got, no, they got five out there. Vladi has reported but has not come into the game yet. The Lakers by two, three minutes and five seconds left to play in the first quarter as Del Harris signals what he wants. Van Exel with the ball, give the ball to Campbell down the middle. Did he travel? No. Did he throw up one that missed the rim again? The second time that's happened, Sabalas has got it, gives underneath to Campbell. He'll hit the rim this time, won't he? No, it slipped out of his hands. And the ball is taken by B.J. Tyler. Tyler with the ball in the front court. Down the middle he comes, gives the ball to Weatherspoon. He pumps, he goes underneath, shot blocked. Nice block shot by Campbell. Three on, make it four on two. Sabalas, the mustard is off the hot dog. He tried a wraparound pass with absolutely no reason. And the ball was the completed pass to one of his teammates, but that teammate happened to be over there sitting on the bench. So ball out of bounds now to the 76ers on the Lakers basketball network. All Ticketmaster outlets. Full court pressure for the Lakers as the Lakers lead it by two. Campbell's out of the ball game. He's missed his last six shots after making his first one. And into the ball game comes Vladi. Now the ball is given to Tyler. Tyler brings it over to Grayer. In low, dribble drive underneath, puts it up in a foul on Bowie. That kid's pretty good. Sharon Wright, Clemson, 6'11", 262. Chick, that's the second time, though, that he has gone baseline with a spin move because he's felt the contact with uh, the uh, size that Sam Bowie has. He's got to step back. Not let him feel the contact so that he can affect the shot when he turns the face. His free throw, he's not a good free thrower. He, did he make it? That gives him six points. He's shooting only 67% on the year. Chick, you were talking about uh, Sharon Wright and Moses Malone. There was an article in a magazine here that said that Sharon Wright, he said that when he was a kid, he'd be Moses Malone at Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I see Moses? He didn't have to buy a uniform. All right, Peeler's got the boot. I guess the word is costume. Give and go back to Peeler, and he's fouling the act of shooting. I'm telling you, folks, say, maybe two other guys on the team will pass with Bowie, but not more than that. You know, Sam Bowie, when you throw it into him and cut, he'll give you the pass. The only disadvantage I see the way Sam is doing it, Chick, he's doing it too often because now yep. the defenders they're getting aware of it as well. Yeah, we said that last night. Free throw is no good by Peeler. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Lakers basketball network. The free throw missed by Peeler. Into the game comes George Lynch. Into the game comes Tony Smith for the Lakers. Van Exel and Sabalas goes out. Sabalas has had a fine quarter. He had 13 minutes since the first six minutes, or 13 points, excuse me. Uh, Van Exel does not have a field goal in uh, three shot attempts. So the score 26 25 as Peeler made the second one. They double team the trap on Tyler. He gives it out in front to Grayer. In low to the big center right. Now down the middle is broken up by George Lynch. It's a three on two. Peeler down the middle will go all the way. He lays it up and it won't go in. He got a little bit too much on it. He was trying to decide which side of the basket to shoot it from. 
Greer comes the other way. He also should have decided on his right hand. I'll say he should have. <laughs> Tyler with a three-point line. It comes down the middle. Little guy is quick. Out of front. Now they take it in low to right. He turns. Shoots over Bowie. No good. Tipped up under there. Nice try. And that try was made by number 21 who just came in. Derek Alston. Here's the ball down the floor. And kicking the ball is called. Charleston is a rookie, 6'11", 226. They got some good rookies. Uh, on that last play, if uh, George Litt runs and runs all the way under the basket and comes out the other side, Vlade is trailing the play. Vlade gets an uncontested layup, but George stopped, and that allowed the player defensively to make to stay there and make the play. Tony Smith with the ball. Tony looking in low to Peeler. Gives it to him against Tyler. Underneath puts it up. It's rejected. A nice block shot comes out of bounds. Yeah, the big guy is in there. Bradley, he'll make you think about it. Well, some since uh, Bradley has come into the game, the Lakers shooting percentage has gone down drastically. He's making guys think about it. They were 7 for 14 before he came in. Since he's come in the game, they are 2 for 10. That's why he got so many million dollars to sign here. Dribble drives Smith around Barrows underneath. Comes to the other side. Puts it up. It's no good. The rebound is knocked away and out of bounds by Bradley. That was a heck of a nice move by Smith, even though he didn't complete the shot. Yeah, that's one where he knew he was going to have to compete with Bradley. I think you're better served there to go up with both hands and try to dunk the basketball, get the foul. Lynch is trying to bring it in. Trying, trying, trying. And brings it in to Sam Bowie. Bowie, as I said, 33 years of age, 11th year in the league. Missed a lot of games because of his leg problems. Now the ball to Peeler. Peeler throws it out in front. Smith's got a three-point country. Now over the left side, Peeler for three. On the way, has to have a bounce. Didn't get a rebound. It's volleyball by Sharon Wright. It goes through the legs of Bradley. Everybody gets on the kit. Evan sakes, he's only 22 years of age. If you didn't want to cheer for him, what'd you sign him for? Here's the ball out in front of Lynch. In low to Lotti. He turns underneath. He puts it out. And uh, we do not have goaltending, but we got a foul. Well, Vladi knew that Sean Bradley was around, so Vladi gave a little head fake. That got Bradley off his feet. Bradley landed on the back of, uh, or excuse me, Bradley landed on the back of Vladi. That's a foul. Nice play by Vladi. Gets the foul. He's at the line to shoot two where he's been uh, pretty good this season, about 75%. Much improved, hasn't he? All right. The big fellas there. Uh, that's Second foul, foul from Bradley. He's been in foul trouble every game that he's played in the NBA. The free throw is good. That gives him three points in the ball game to go with one rebound. One of the reasons why Bradley has been in foul trouble every game, it seems, since he's been in the league, and it's only his second year, of course, is the fact that he, he's, he's weak. He's got to get a lot more strength in his, in his body to be able to hold off the players a little easier. Speaking of Moses Malone, I think he fouled out of about four games in his career. Wilt never fouled out of any, but Moses hardly ever got more than three fouls. Both free throws are good by Vladi, and the Lakers have a three-point lead. With the first quarter winding down now, the 24-second clock is active. It's at 6. Game clock at 14. Dribble drive comes in deep behind the board. Barrows over to Bradley at the base. 16-footer, no good. The rebound is off. They put it up underneath and miss it. Now we got four seconds left. Long pass to Lynch. He's underneath. He puts it up and scores it on a slam. He missed it. Rebound is off, and the Lakers go away empty. And that's happening too often, Stu. Uh, there's a case where B.J. Tyler comes and makes a great defensive play against George Lynch, who is much larger, but George takes it up, and B.J. said, hey, I'm going to send it back, and he did on the Lakers Basketball Network. Sharon Wright had seven, and in the first quarter, the Lakers only could shoot 32%. The 76ers, 43. The Lakers out-rebounded them 14-13. to 13. Three turnovers for the Lakers and five for the Sixers. To start the second quarter, B.J. Tyler gives it to um, Barros. Underneath the basket, they fumble away a sure field goal, and the ball was last touched by the Lakers. The man that fumbled it was the rookie out of Duquesne, Derek Alston, 6'11". Yeah, he fumbled away, but the Lakers touched it last, so yep. the Sixers get it back. With 12 in the 24, Lakers never had possession. Barros down the middle, throws up an alley-oop, and banks it in. Nice scoop shot. Nice. 28-27. Well, he's, he's having himself a fine season. It just so happens at the end of this season, he's a free agent. Yeah, he'll be gone. Bye-bye. Maybe not. Maybe they'll talk him in the stand and pick up some people. They're going to get a high draft pick, it looks like. Here's the ball into the oh, Bounce pass by Bowie. Saved up the baseline by Smith, who scores it. Lakers got a break. Is that kid in the floor hurt? Oh, nice. That's Barrows hobbling a little bit. He's been injured. They didn't know for sure whether or not he would play tonight. He's sore in the leg area. 30 to 27. Sore left knee. 
All right, with the ball, Tyler, pick and roll, broken up by Peeler, knocks the ball to Lynch. He's out man defensively, gives the ball over to Tony Smith, who made the last basket. The Laker lead is three points. Now the ball goes into the post man, Peeler. Nice pass to Bowie. His shot no good, but he was fouled from behind by Derrick Olson. Boy, that's a nice pass by Peeler. Well, Peeler turned away from the double team that was coming, and that was a nice move. But then to have the presence to find Sam Bowie open, and Bowie takes it up, he gets fouled. He'll be at the line to shoot two. Very good free thrower, 80%. The best free thrower on the team is um, Peeler, I guess, at 82%. I thought that uh, three, yeah, three's at 80% also. Free throw good in the first try by Sam. The next one is no good, so he's made 29 this year. Out of 37, rebound is off to Bradley. Big Sean, BYU, played only one year of college ball. What do they expect out of him? Magic Johnson or Michael Jordan, the ball into Bradley comes underneath, puts it up, basket counts, he's fouled. Now People are going around yeah. Vladi too easy. That's the third time someone has did a spin baseline on Vladi and just left him standing. Again, you, I, I don't think you would learn after the first one. Vladi is left by someone much slower than him, and that's Bradley who gets the basket and the foul. He's going to try for the three-point play. Coming into the ballgame is Jeff Grayer. They take the B.J. Tyler out. Grayer was the starting guard opposite Barrows. Barrows is out there now. Grayer came in with Milwaukee, then Golden State for a couple of years. The free throw is good. Three-point play completed, and the Laker lead is reduced to one. Smith with the ball in the front court, going to the southern goal to our right. Same position we sit in at the four. Bowie bounce underneath. Great pass. Smith puts it up and puts it up. What an outstanding bounce. Man. Yeah, nice shot, too, because Bradley was flying at uh, Tony Smith. <laughs> 33 to 30, and he's got some big wings to fly with. Barrows with it. Here comes Bradley at post up against Vladi. He's got Vladi on his hip. He brings it out of front. That's a good pass to Alston. His 17-footer is no good. The rebound is tipped out of bounds unless they can save it, and they did. Vladi can't get it. It was tipped away by Alston to Bradley who scores. Vladi reached. The other player leaped. Yeah, and if that other player has any kind of size at all against someone seven foot, yep. he's going to get the ball. Absolutely. 33 to 32, the Lakers are up by a point. The ball to Bowie, the high post. Bowie bounce underneath to Smith again. And here's a whistle, foul. It'll come out of bounds. I'll tell you, Bowie is earning a living. Smith ought to take him to dinner tomorrow when we get down to... <laughs> Charlotte. Uh, Smith said he would, but uh, Sam makes more money than uh, Tony. So Tony said, we can go to dinner, but Sam, you pick up the tail. They take Vladi out of the ballgame again. He's not producing. You got to take him out. You got to set him down and let him know you're not satisfying, the coach is saying. Vladi's got four points and one rebound. As I told you, in one hour of play in the previous two games, he had six rebounds. That won't get it. 33 to 32. Now we got the Smith with the ball. In low to Peeler. Peter's a good passer. Out to Smith. Over to the far sideline and a jump shot by Lynch. That's no good. The rebound is off long. Here we go with Barrows controlling. The defenders get back. Barrows says, I'll stop for a three then. He missed, and the rebound is a hard-working Sam Bowie. He knows the fundamentals of the game very well, Stu. Yeah, he's one of the smartest players in the league. Ball pass to Campbell, and he makes a 15-footer. Campbell gets his second basket after he had missed a total of six consecutive shots. He knocks one home. Defensively, the Lakers just have to assert themselves now and take control of this ball game. When they get to Charlotte, they're going against a team that's won 13 straight on its home floor. The ball goes in low to Bradley. Bounce down the middle. Oh, look out! And there's going to be a foul. Foul is going to be on Smith. Smith got airborne, and when you know, he came down, he landed on the shoulders Chick, of Barrows. I don't know if Tony touched him, though. <laughs> Maybe really he hurtled him, huh? he, he jumped over him, I believe. He, uh, he jumps into the air, and he misses him. He, oh, oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He, not only caught him with the leg. Half of he, him missed him. Then he caught him with the arm as well. That was a good try by Tony. If he could have scissored his legs a little better, he would have missed the smaller Dana Barrows. This guy's a 90% free thrower, one of the very best in the league. In fact, he's in his sixth year, and his career average free throwing is 82%. Well, he stands away from that line. Boy, does he throws. ever. The line is 15 feet from the backboard, folks, and he steps back to an area of about 16 feet, and he makes it work pretty good. He's got 10 points, 35, 34, and he's also got some assists, two. Here's the ball down the middle of Peeler, brings it out to Smith for a three-pointer, and 
and it's good. Boy, he arched that one. Tony Smith from three-point land. That gives Smith seven points off of the bench. He missed a shot to open his uh, debut on the floor, and now he knocks in three in a row. They look at Weatherspoon inside, bounce down the middle to Weatherspoon. Did anybody touch it? Yeah. Yes, the Lakers did. Peeler. Well, that's a good job by George Lynch. That's what you're taught of moving your feet. George was playing behind. Then he went to a side position. Then he went to a total front. He did a good job of altering what his, the defensive look was. And that was against Weatherspoon, who weighs 230. Here's Barrows coming in low. Shows up a right-hander. No. Nobody boxes out. So the big guy, Radley, at 7-6, looks down the hole and says, I better put this leather thing in there. Smith dribbled in deep. Baseline to Campbell. 17-foot right-hand jumper, not close. Rebound is off, and I think Bradley looks pretty good. He gives the ball to Barrows. Barrows to Grayer. Grayer in low, throws it up, score. And the Lakers have been caught at 38. Well, I tell you, since Sean Bradley has entered his ball game, the Sixers defensively have been a lot tougher. They sure have. You got to put him out there, folks, and let him grow up with the game. You sign him to a long contract for many millions of dollars. He's got to learn to play. Bowie's got it now. Bowie shoots over him. It's short because he made Bowie all with the shot. Bradley did a good job defensively. Barrows with it, and they can get the lead. You cannot finesse Bradley. You have to overpower him. Weatherspoon dribbling. He stops. Shoots over Lynch. Nice shot from 17 feet. Weatherspoon, the third-year man, gets his sixth point. He is their second-best scorer at 18 points a game. And the Lakers trail for the second time on a 6 to nothing run. The Lakers call a much-needed timeout. I was afraid of this, Stu, that they'd come out a little flat tonight, and they are. Yeah, the Lakers, after their emotional win last night, getting in very late to the hotel, seems like they'll take a half to wake up on the Lakers Basketball Network. Ball out of bounds to Sabala, six to nothing scoring run about the last minute and a half. Van Exel comes back in the ball game. Lottie's got to get into this thing. The big guy Bradley comes on and makes nine points and grabs five rebounds here in about eight minutes. Here's the ball to Campbell. Drive on Bradley. Comes underneath. Scores on Bradley. That's a good move. But he didn't finesse him. That's what you have to do to Bradley. You have to overpower him. He doesn't have a whole lot of strength, so take him to the rack and hurt him. 40 to 40 is the score. Barrows with it. Lob underneath the basket. Weatherspoon's got it away from Lynch. Slam dunk. But again, Chick, the front was being done by uh, George Lynch. And if that's the case, then who's ever guarding the passer, the passer must smother him. Right. Smith with the ball. Lakers trail it. 6.39 to play in the half. Here's Van Exel with it. Van Exel throws a high pass. Lynch saves it and puts it up left-handed and scores it. That's a beautiful shot and a save of a bad pass. And that gets uh, Van Exel another assist, by the way. And in the assist department, he's got five. Out in front, we got Barrows. Over to Weatherspoon. Nobody guarding him. So here he comes underneath. Puts it up and blows it. The rebound is off to Lynch. A good rebound. Flanked to the left by Sabalos. Bad, Bad pass by Lynch. Intercepted by Barrows. Barrows goes the other way. Stops for a three. That's no good. Rebound Weatherspoon. No good. Rebound volleyball. Beautifully by Van Exel. Over to Smith. Back to Van Exel. Great fake. And he scores. <laughs> oh, did he fake Scott Williams. Scott Williams. <laughs> He went for the schoolyard fake. <laughs> he Nick laid it in. All right, there's a jump shot by Weatherspoon. No good. Rebound, Van Exel. Looks like he came back to play now. It's four on three. Van Exel gives to Lynch. Lynch under the basket to Zabalas. He's as quick as anybody in the league delivering that ball after he gets it in close. Yeah, he's got very quick release. He's got soft hands. He's just a natural scorer around the basket. And now the Lakers come back six to nothing. And they lead at 46 to 42 after trailing 42 to 40. And with the ball in the front court, we got the white-suited illegal defense. We got the white-suited 76ers, I was going to say. Illegal defense. Lakers all look at each other and said, who was it? it was Eddie Jones comes back in. Eddie's got all of his friends and family here tonight. He went over and watched Temple play today. Well, Sharon Wright coming back in for Bradley. The Lakers ought to be happy that Bradley is leaving the game. That last basket by the Lakers on a nice pass from Lynch to Sabalas. For the easy deuce. Well, I'll tell you, he changed the game when he came in. Bradley yes, did. Yes, he did. Barrows has got the ball. Barrows gives the ball over to Weatherspoon. Underneath the basket to Williams. Puts it up and puts it in. Williams, he almost missed it. And he knows it. That's his first point. He's the starting forward. 46-44, the Lakers. 5-0-6 left to play here in the first half. And Exel hippity hops the dribble across the white 10-second line. He looks for and gives it to Jones. Jones gets a screen by Campbell. Jones looks to Campbell now. Brings the bounce pass out to Lynch. Lynch to the dribble down the middle. Gives it into Campbell. 
four on the clock. Campbell underneath from two feet misses. Rebound Campbell underneath puts it up to have a block, but a foul is called on right. Well, I tell you, Eldon did a great job of getting his own missed shot, but he was behind the plane of the board with his head down. I don't think he knew where he was, and when he went up, if he hadn't have gotten bailed out by the foul by right, I don't know how he would have been able to find the rim because he goes up and actually has the backboard block the shot first. Campbell is hitting the offensive board the last few games very well. His free throw is no good. He's got six points and three rebounds. Had a good game last night. Yeah, too. yeah, career high, 30 points. Uh, he, and had he not got into foul trouble, yeah. those numbers would have been, that number would have been a lot higher. Yeah, he might have gone to 40. He really might have. He was hitting everything, full of confidence. Free throw is good in the second try. The Lakers by three. This is a tough ball game so far. 440 to play. Well, the Lakers haven't played ex extremely well in the Here's first half. Here's the ball over to Williams. Dribble down the middle, give to Weatherspoon. He pump fakes, bounce underneath. Beautifully to right, slam dunk. That's great, great interior passing. Yeah, they get the once you're going to trap, you cannot let the basketball get to the middle. And the Lakers come down now, nursing a one-point lead. 4.20 to play and a half. Eddie Jones with the ball. He played here many times at the Spectrum with Temple University. Ball into, bounce down the middle. Nice pass. Lynch slam dunks left-handed. He's ambidextrous, believe me. I'll tell you something. Lynch has played well the last you, few ball games as well. You bet he has, and not much has been said about it. You and I have talked about it a lot. Four minutes left to play here in the first half. Lakers by three. Pass goes in low to right. Guarded by Campbell. He backs him in. He shoots an eight-foot jumper. That's no good. Good rebound by Sabalos. Sabalos has got five rebounds to go with 15 points. Van Exel front court. Van Exel to the base. Around Weatherspoon. Feeds the ball to Campbell. He goes to the basket with a left-hand slam. I worry when he goes up with left hand slam because his hands are small and sometimes it slips up. But that's the strongest of the two, Chick. He yep. loves to put it in the left and that's throw right. it down. That's nine points for him. Timeout is called by Philadelphia, Stu. Well, 76ers want to talk it over a little bit. Nick Van Exel has gotten some good penetration on the last couple of plays. All right, the Lakers are in front 51 to 46, and we're going to be back right after this word from Southwest Airlines. This is the Lakers Basketball Network. All right, the ball is out of bounds to Weatherspoon. This ties the biggest lead of the ball game for the Lakers. Five points, not much of a lead, is it? Barrows with it. Out of front to Jeff Grayer. I think he's really a good addition to this club. He's 29 years old. Now to Barrows. I know he's a good addition. He hit another jump shot from outside for his 12th point. A two-pointer, and it's 51 to 48. So, their timeout, as it so often does in the NBA. Pulls off an annuity. Jones has got it in front of his own bench. Stop. Fires for three. Didn't come close. The rebound is off the Weatherspoon. That's only his third rebound. He averages about eight a game. Barrows with the ball in the front court. 51 to 48. The Lakers. Three minutes left to play in the first half. Interesting halftime show for you. Radio television. Grayer has got it. Whistle inside. That basket would have counted. Yes, it would have. Illegal defense. Here comes Bradley back in, and out goes Scott Williams. Yeah, as we were getting ready to say, if that wasn't bad enough that the Lakers get a uh, technical foul, in comes Sean Bradley, who has really hurt the Lakers tonight. Nine points, five rebounds. That hasn't been what's hurt them. It's been his defense and his presence under the basket that has affected the Lakers this evening. This is quite a change for John uh, Lucas, the coach. Remember the last few years he's been coaching San Antonio and he had David Robinson. Now he's got this raw youngster. And this kid might be pretty good one day. Got to get some weight on him. 51 to 49, the Lakers, as the free throw was good. 244 to play in the half. Jeff Grayer out in front. Grayer standing at 6'5", weighing 215 pounds. Looks inside. Weatherspoon being fronted by Lynch, doing a good job on him. Eight on the clock. Now he's got the illegal. Up and illegal. Eddie Lee. Jones. Easy to call. Also, I think Sabalas might have been out in front. Anyway, they call it against, as you said, Eddie Jones. Lottie's going to come back in. Lottie's got to find some rhythm in this ballgame. Well, Vladdy's coming back because with Sharon Wright yeah. and Sean Bradley on the floors, mm -hmm. uh, the day Lakers are too small to handle them, so they bring uh, Vladdy in for George Lynch. Lynch played well out there. The free throw by the 90% free thrower is good. Coming into this ball game, Barrows had made at the free throw line 149 of 165, so he's now 153 of 169. All right, it's 51 to 50. The Lakers by one. 
And the ball brought out of front. If you're going home with at least a split on this trip, you got to get this one. I'll tell you, that team down in Charlotte's awfully good. I think the Lakers can beat them or give them a good game. But they've won 13 straight at home. That'll be Monday night. The ball in low to Bradley. Backing in on Vladi. Bradley turns it. He traveled. Not yet. He just took a long That's step. Travel, yeah. Travel, yeah. Well, they'll let you do that move off the dribble immediately. But if you pick up pick your dribble up. Yep. and try to pivot and then come back to the swinging hook, they will call you for the walk. Every time. Every time, and it's 51 to 50. The Lakers have the ball in the lead. Van Exel with the ball in the attacking zone. Van Exel looking for somebody to give it to. Here comes uh, Jones around the pick. Jones hit a three-pointer early in the ball game. He dribbles around his man. He's underneath, and it's blocked. Great block. The ball comes off, and another block shot under the basket. Campbell couldn't get it. I think that Bradley got credit for it. It might have been right or Weatherspoon. They were all in a little cluster there. Absolutely right. Here's a pass out to the 10 second line to uh, Grayer. A basket gives him the lead just before halftime with a minute 40 to play. And looking in now to the big man. Grayer fires for three. That's no good. Rebound is chased. Weatherspoon beats Lottie to it. Here's a timeout. And Weatherspoon called, called a timeout. Time We're wow. seeing more of that this yeah. year than ever in the history of the game. As he went out of bounds with it, Weatherspoon called timeout. 20 second timeouts on the Lakers basketball network. For more information, plus six series in the box. Coming up on Wednesday night. The beautiful clothes that Stu and I wear are from Rick Pally. He's located in Sherman Oaks, California. Obviously a very beautiful store and uh, outstanding clothing values. So stop in and see Rick Pally, Sherman Oaks, California. The Lakers lead by one, but how long will that last? 132 to play in the half. Well, I tell you, the block shots, the Lakers have two, the 76ers have seven. The Lakers, uh, the Lakers are one of the best shot blocking. They yeah, are, are the, the leaders in, in that league. department. In the league. Grayer has got it. Nobody guarding right. Now he gets the ball. Campbell picks him up. Down the middle. Give and go under to Grayer. Great block shot by Sabalas. He throws it on the floor. They beat the Lakers to the ball. Great play by Sabalas defensively. And here is a whistle. And a whistle. The referees are talking to each other. I think they're discussing the shot clock. Well, it's down to six, if that means anything. They're resetting it. I don't know why. I thought the shot was blocked. Did it hit the rim after the block? I don't think so. It must have, though, or that's yeah. the only yeah. premise under which they could reset it. All right, the ball to Barrows. With the timeout call when he went across the line, and then this reset, that's a break for them. They're only down by a point, 51 to 50. Dribble drive, Barrows turns the corner, slips, and they're going to call a foul. And Sabalas goes after the referee who made the call. And the man who made the call is Ron Gerritsen. Sabalas said, I didn't touch him. Well, he turns the corner and he really steps on the gas. A little bit of a touch. There's no way that can be called a foul because it wasn't a straight arm. You're allowed to touch as long as the arm is bent. Oh, Vladi couldn't intercept it. Bradley's got it down the middle, throws it up, misses, tips it up, misses. Rebound is off and the Lakers get it. Jones, the front guard pass to Van Exel. Van Exel is fouled intentionally. Van Exel should have thrown the ball to Vladi, perhaps, but maybe he didn't have the passing lane. No, no, I don't think he had the time because as soon as he caught the basketball and tried to make his spin, Dana Barros is grabbing him around the waist. So even if he throws it, the foul would have been called and it would have been a no play. Nick would still be shooting the two free throws. All right. He is shooting from the 15 foot line. Free throw on the way. Good. He's had some slow first halves, and then he usually comes back with a big second half. That's his fourth point. He has one field goal. Last night, though, he had a game, boy, I tell you, 29 points, 10 assists, six rebounds, but three of those points are the ones that everyone's talking about, the ones that beat the Boston Celtics. And he Celtics. had one basket last night that won the hearts of Laker fans. 53 to 50 as he makes them both. Ball in low to right. Right double team. Out of front to Barrows. Barrows dribbling the ball against Van Exel. Barrows brings the ball over to Weatherspoon. Two point country. Weatherspoon with five on the clock. He knows the clock. Dribble drive down the middle. Throws it up. Didn't draw iron, but the rebound by Grayer is good. 
Campbell and Vladi were both there, but they both stepped back slightly. And it's 53-52, the Lakers. 25 seconds left. Pass under the basket, off the hands of Sabalas and out of sound. What happened there was deflected by Barrows or Weatherspoon, and that changed the course of the ball. Well, this has been a uh, an interesting half of basketball for the Lakers because they haven't really they haven't really played that well, but yet they have a one point lead. I think in the second half they'll come out and play a much better uh, half of ball. All right, that's only the second uh, turnover by the Lakers in this quarter. We got nine seconds left. Look out, Vladi out of front, Barrows. Now the ball to Grayer in low to Bradley. Oh, the Lakers down the Lakers. middle to Wright. Wright makes a 14 footer. They're pretty well coached. I'll tell you that. One second left from backcourt. Van Exel. And at the end of the half, the Sixers 54, the Lakers 53. Coming up at halftime, we're going to take a look at one of the greatest games of the 1980s. It'll be Magic and Dr. J. That's coming up next. The score at halftime, the Sixers 54, the Lakers 53 on the Lakers Basketball Network. Make them both, you have your biggest lead. That's five point lead. That, that equals the previous big. And that's the way you have to attack Sean Bradley. You can't let him set up in the half court defense. And if you do, you really have to go after him with aggression. But if you can get him away from the basket, make him move his feet, I think you have a much better chance of getting a foul on him. The Lakers lead it by six. 69 63 as Sabalas makes them both for his 22nd point of the ball game. He's made seven out of eight field goals. I'll put that together with last night's shooting and you're going to find out it's very very good. Here's the ball going in low to right. Right backs in. Right throws the ball to Weatherspoon. Ten foot jumper on the way. No good rebound by Bowie again. Boy's boy, got to be in there. That's his sixth rebound. Van Exel change direction. Oh did he lose his man barrels. Go to the baseline. Double team in the corner. Brings the cross court pass to Jones. Three pointer looks good. It is good. <laughs> Eddie Jones has more than 50 people here cheering for him, that's for sure. I'll tell you something's for sure. That was a heck of a pass out of the corner because one of the guys that was double teaming little Van Exel was Sean Bradley. That was a great cross court pass. L.A. in an eight to nothing run. Pass under the basket to Bradley. And Bradley is fouled by Sabalos. But that's one thing the Lakers trap and Bradley is the free man. He's easy to spot at seven foot six. They just throw it anywhere up up in the air and it seems like he catches the ball. Cedric goes over contact ball out of bounds sideline. Here's a dribble drive by Barrows baseline to Weatherspoon comes in deep puts it up. Was it blocked. Yeah blocked Cedric. by Cedric Sabalos. But Paul did you say that uh, Sabalos is seven out of eight tonight. OK, then in his last two games, he is 18 out of 24 field goals. <laughs> That'll get it. 75%. What do you do that for, Paul? Don't you think I can figure? <laughs> he knows you. <laughs> <laughs> he could look at me and know I need help. Dribble drives, Sabalos down the middle, throws it up and in. That breaks the 8 to nothing run. But you can't let the little point guards uh, split the double team. Three-pointer again by Jones. Good again by Jones. You think he doesn't want to do that here? Jones has made back-to-back -back three pointers. I thought he had one early in the game. He did. He's three out of five three-pointers. Lakers by ten. Bounce in low and gonna be a foul. Offensive foul. Offensive foul. It's on Sharon Wright. 75-65. Wright is arguing, so the Lakers take advantage of it. Go down five on four. Bowie slips and falls. Didn't hurt himself. Van excellent and eight. Takes a shot. No good. Rebounded in by Campbell. This has been the trait of the Sixers this year. Play a pretty good first half and then fall apart. And that's something that as a coach you just hate to see. You want your team to be consistent throughout the ball game, especially in the second half. On the Lakers Basketball Network. Master outlets in Blockbuster Music, Robinson May, and Tower Records. For group sale information for Laker games, call the forum. Here's a bounce down the middle of Bradley. He grabs it, he spins, he hooks it short. Shook hook shot of eight. Sabala's got it. Pass down the floor, knocked out of bounds. A great retreating defensive play by Barrows. There's where uh, Sean Bradley's really got to work on his game. Develop some in the paint moves there so he can free himself 
and use his height. The Lakers in the first half only shot 41 percent. Second half, they're shooting 69 percent. That will get it done. Well, the Lakers are on a 22 to 6 run over the last six minutes and 20 seconds, eradicating the 59-55 lead that, that Philly enjoyed when it started. Jump shot by Jones. He wanted another three, didn't get a rebound. Sabalos, he throws it. I think it was intended for Campbell, intercepted by Jones, don't you? Yeah, I definitely think it was for Sam. Dribble drive, Jones on the middle. Ah! Jones! I, I want to tell you something, fans. The seven foot six inch guy was chasing him, and Eddie Jones sets the house on fire. Wow. <laughs> Mother, call your daughter in. Oh, Eddie, show it to me again, Eddie. Now we get an illegal defense. The coach is going crazy on the sideline. That is the Laker coach. Listen to the fans, Chick. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> He's got to be one of the most popular men ever to play college ball. In now, I said when you attack Bradley, you got to power him, and that's what Eddie Jones did. He powered it in, dunked it over the big guy. That's right. a great move, and the fans are now cheering, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> All right, Barros makes the technical foul free throw. It's 66-79, the Lakers. Jones has scored eight of the last ten points put in by the Lakers. What a rookie. Pass down the middle is a great pass and a fine save by Bradley. A shot no good but it's put up and in by Wright. Boy that was a good pass and what a save by the big guy. He must have pretty good hands Stu. Dribble drives to Ballas underneath reverse layup blocked by Bradley. Good block. Ball to uh, Weatherspoon to Barros. Barrows coming in deep. Hey, you're only up by 11 points. You got to keep your nose to the grindstone. Baseline, Weatherspoon. Shot no good, pushing off foul. Wright got his hand caught in a big cookie jar. And he didn't get any of the cookies. <laughs> you had them all. Four fouls. I, on didn't right. tell, I didn't tell Sharon that the cookie jar was empty. <laughs> oh, that, that, that win last night. Did a lot for all of us. That, that was one of the most unbelievable finishes I've ever seen. Uh, now I know that Tony Smith won a game against Cleveland this year, the three-pointer at the buzzer, but it wasn't like that one somehow because the Lakers had felt that they had just got cheated by a bad call, and all of a sudden they come back despite the basket that was put in with two and four ten seconds left. And here's Sabalas going on and the shot Bowie. is no good, but Bowie puts it in on the rebound. Bowie's playing oh, big time. Big time is all right. I like that expression. He's playing like Man Mountain Dean. 81 to 68. Three minutes left to play. Don't leave him. Here's a dribble drive. Barrows underneath. Throws the ball. Oh, that's a great catch by Wright. And he's hammered down hard. Sam Bowie. And so he, I hope he's not hurt. Cedric gets the foul, but Bowie with the reject. I mean, what a rejection as Dana Barrows makes a nice pass after fumbling it. The foul is on Cedric, but the block shot won't count, but it's emphatic. In the ball game, off of the bench, Bowie has got seven points and six rebounds, and I mean he has been very, very instrumental in this recovery by the Lakers as they had trail. Let's pause. Ten seconds for station identification on the Lakers. Sam Bowie, Basketball Network. Wright got his 19th point as he made one of two free throws. Boy, that is good for that rookie. He is going to be something, I believe, Stu. That's 11 points on the average. Bowie out in front. Down the middle goes Joe. Oh, another slam dunk over Bradley. The place is going crazy. He lifted like a helicopter. And he came down like a snowflake. Look in front of the Laker bench. Get a picture of the bench. Get a picture of the bench. There they are. To the new lord. Here's a pass underneath. Bowie blocks a shot. Bluey controls the Here ball. They Here they in. come four on two. Give it to this underneath is a little scoop shot put up by Van Exel. He was looking for Jones. He wanted to give him another one. Timeout is called. The noise is for nobody but Eddie Jones. Listen. Jones has got 10 in the quarter, 15 in the game on the Lakers basketball network. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Check that last basket by Eddie Jones was an introduction. He's going to the basket and he says, Mr. Bradley, my name is Eddie Jones.
I want you to meet and greet me. And the bench for the Lakers, they know who it is, and they bow to Mr. Jones. All right, now here's an important factor in the game. They take Bowie out of the game. 7.6 rebounds, and they do not give him on the official stats here one block shot, Stu, not one. Can you believe that? That's a good Here's a pass in low to right. Down the middle, the ball is intercepted and a foul. Sabalos intercepted, and the foul is called. And uh, I wanted to tell you something else. Jones, 15 points, 10 in this quarter. Uh, uh, Paul Evans, you're pretty sharp tonight. He tells me, he said to me, what does Jones' slam dunking remind you of? And I said, uh, oh, there's so many guys. He said, how about the late Gus Johnson? And yes, Gus used to take off like that, Stu. Yes, he did. Very you know, much like that. He Eddie Jones was asked to be in the slam dunk competition, yes. but he's declined. Oh, did he? Yes, his hip. He's got that hip pointer to yeah. steal a little Pass sword. in low, intercepted. That's a nice defensive play by Grayer. Grayer comes to the front court trailing by 16 points. What a turnaround. The Lakers trailed at 59-56. Now we got a minute and a half left in the third. Pass in low to Grayer. Grayer looking for somebody to give it to. He gets it up. Shot no good. Rebound off. Puts it up and scores this time. Antonio Harvey's in the game for the Lakers. Long lead pass to Jones. Under he comes. Puts it up. They block it. Ball taken on the rebound. Put in by Sabalos. He's got 24 again tonight. That gives him 55 in the last two games. You know, Cedric, you don't, he doesn't find himself in the position to score like that by accident. He hustles and he knows the game. Never stops running. Outside Barrows, three-pointer. He knocks it down, and he's had a good night from distance as he has all year. As I told you, coming in, he was shooting 48% three-pointers, and tonight he's three out of five. 87 to 74 in the final minute of the period. Van Exel with the ball. Coming to post up to Sabalos. If he gets it, he'll use that first quick step. Watch him. Now they double team so he can't, so he gives it out to Jones. He fakes the three, holding foul, and that's called on Alston, the rookie. Personal foul, Derek Alston. So that's going to send the, free throw uh, time. Lakers to the free throw line, and Eddie Jones is going to go there. Well, he said he's enjoyed a fantastic. Eddie quarter Jones here in the third two. not because of the number of points but the way he's acquired a few of them just some spectacular plays in this quarter free throw is good by Eddie I don't know either my headset's lopsided or my head is I go for the uh, latter oh thanks 89-74 and the Lakers lead it by 15 30 seconds left Jones made both free throws. Here's the ball to Bradley down the middle, throws it up, got the roll, and got the basket. Bradley gets his first point of the second half. 11 points overall, 89-76. This year, they've lost 15 times in 16 games when they have allowed the opponent 100 points. And I'll guarantee you, the Lakers are going to get at least 100. Dribbling the ball, Van Exel tries to save it, but he can't. He bounced it off his own toe. Turnover. Well, 13 uh, seconds left to play in the quarter. Eight turnovers for the Lakers. The uh, 76ers with a three-pointer here could trail only by 10 entering, a four, entering the fourth. You're absolutely right. And I think we proved last night it's not over until the fat lady sings. Or until somebody sings. Doesn't have to be here's a lady, a, I guess. Here's a pass. Free throw line. Can't do that. Can't do that. That's traveling. Passing to yourself. He started to shoot it. Changed his mind. Now you got three tenths of a second. You have to catch and shoot. The rule book says you can't score in this time. So the Lakers. Did he call a timeout? Yes. Lakers call. He called a. That might be a good timeout well, depending on how many may, he has left. He may have four yes, left. That's right. And, and he'd have to that's give it right. up for nothing. Good call by the coach on the Lakers basketball network. I'll tell you, I've never been insulted so much. Three tenths of a second. If they make a basket here, I'll walk home. Go in, go in, go in. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's hurt. Somebody got hurt down there, got a hard fall at the baseline. That's your own right? Yeah, he landed on his wallet. Score at the end of three. The Lakers had a nice comeback in the third quarter. 89-76 Los Angeles. Whoa, whoa. What was the score? 12 of Eddie's came in an impressive third quarter. In the last nine minutes of the third quarter, Stu, the Lakers outscored them 30 to 10. Campbell's got the ball. Campbell out in front to Bowie. He might probably make that. He did make it. A 20 footer. He likes that shot. He really does. 91 to 76. Biggest lead of the ballgame. 
fourth quarter action. Lakers trying to take a two to one game advantage in their four game trip, which will conclude Monday night down in uh, Charlotte. Pass inside, broken up with the Lakers. Bowie and Campbell had a piece of it. It's picked by Sabalas to Smith. In low baseline to Jones. Jones brings it out in front to Smith. When he takes Jones out of the ballgame, and I'm sure he will, for one specific reason, if no other, that's to get a hand from these fans. He's done things slam dunking. You can't believe he dribbles around Bradley. Oh! Oh! That isn't right. He got to throw Bradley out of the game. And I'll tell you why. Because Bradley's been dunked on twice by Eddie Jones. Yeah. That time, he floored oh. him after the whistle. I think if you're the officials, it was going to be a one-shot foul. You now turn it now, into a two-shot foul. Now the coach, Lucas, throws it. They're going to kick him out or to call a technical. They call a technical on Lucas. I'll tell you, Bradley went down considerably in my estimation on that play. Well, Eddie Jones is, was taking him baseline. The whistle's already sounded. He throws it. You know, it really more, a little, it looked worse than what it ends up being. It's not ends up being, but I don't know if he was trying to hurt him. But when he left the floor, he was uh, doesn't take much contact to knock you off balance. And Bradley gets the contact, and Eddie uh, goes down real hard. So he's going to shoot the uh, I think the technical they're saying. They had a technical on the coach. Then it'll be the uh, uh, foul, which will be two shots plus the ball. The free throw by Jones is good. I, I feel the same as you do. I don't think Sean Bradley tried to hurt him. I, I, I really don't. Uh, I think he could have hit him a lot harder. Oh, yeah. Behind. The reason why he continued with the defensive play because he's been dunked on twice by uh, by Eddie Jones. And believe me, as a player, you remember those. Now he shoots another free throw and misses. Into the game comes B.J. Tyler, University of Texas guard. Out of the game goes Jeff Grayer. So they're calling two shot foul, uh, flagrant foul, flagrant so foul plus two the plus the ball. Then they had the technical foul. So yep. Eddie makes one of the three. Now it's ball out of bounds to the Lakers. And on the play, it was just a good, good play by the Lakers. There's no way that Sean Bradley could stay with Eddie on the perimeter. And uh, hard, hard fall. Lucas is going to get Eddie thrown Jones. out here if he doesn't shut up. He's really riding the referee. It's 92 to 76. 11:05 left to play in the contest. And the ball bounced in low to Jones, down the middle of Campbell. Well, he tried to get fancy. The mustard came off the hot dog. Onions all over the ground. Yeah, this game's not over yet. They better go ahead and continue to play. Maros takes the ball in low to right. Stolen! Great play by Jones. Here they come three on two. Give it to Jones. He didn't give it to anybody. I think he ran with it. He got, he he got fouled. He fouled. Yeah. fouled. Yeah, definitely. Well, he should have given the ball up. But anyway. Well, Eddie Jones is, is uh, really making a nice homecoming here. I'll say. I'll tell you, he's doing it all. So often guys come to their hometown and they try too hard. Bowie's got the ball. I'm just happy that he wasn't hurt on that play. That ball, yeah. He took, he went down hard. Ball to the high post man, and that's Bowie out above the three-point line. Posting up inside is Jones against B.J. Tyler. Now the ball to Bowie, and we've got a three-second three violation on the Lakers. That Either. was on Eddie Jones trying to get the ball in the low post against uh, Tyler. Ten and a half to play, 92 to 76. Lakers fly to Charlotte tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock Eastern time. A couple of hours on the flight. Play Monday night. Alonzo Morning, ball in low. He tries to, the man with the ball right, pass the ball to Bradley. Did he travel? Not yet. Throws it up and in. Did they ever think of counting to three? No, no. I mean, Bradley was in there. I know I can count higher than three, and I got past three. I don't know about that either. 92 to 78. <laughs> Ten minutes left to play. And the ball to Jones. Jones goes to dribble. He's against Bradley. Loses Bradley. Give the ball to Campbell. Out of front. A 22-footer inside of the three-point line. He was standing on the line, 22 feet out. And that's Bowie's 11th point of the ball game. He's got seven rebounds. Two assists. Have they still not given him a block shot? That's sinful. Ball underneath the basket to Bradley. He loses it. Throws it through the legs of right. Out of the sideline. The ball is out of bounds. Wright is on his back. And the Lakers try to help Wright up, and he disdains that. Shoves somebody's hand away. I think the guy that he was after was Sedale Street. <laughs> you know Sedale was in his yeah. ear. Oh, you know he was talking trash. <laughs> Sedale misses playing so bad. I'll tell you. Bowie was instrumental in the Lakers third quarter play. I'll tell you that they outscored the Sixers 17 to 6 in the five minutes that Bowie played in the third. Nice stat Paul. 
Bowie has got the ball. 94 78. Bowie turns. 15 footer is blocked. Blocked by Wright. Under the basket is knocked out of bounds by Sabalos. 9 13 to play. Cedric trying his best to get that offensive rebound. He just could not get it and tipped it out of bounds. Eddie sure. Jones goes out and gets yeah. a little bit of a risk. So, uh, He'll coming be back. into the ball game is Weatherspoon. And here's a foul. Foul is called against Peeler. Nice dribble drive quickness by B.J. Tyler. Yeah, they do have some quickness in their backcourt, but the problem is they don't have much size with uh, Tyler and uh, Dana Barrows playing together. Bradley is the center. The forwards are Weatherspoon and Alston. Tyler is one of the guards with Barrows. Barrows has got it, looks, and feeds the ball to Bradley. Back to Barrows, three-pointer. He got another one. That's five that he's hit. And it's four out of six. Here's a bad pass, inbound pass thrown away by Bowie, but coming in for the shot, Tyler missed it. 94 to 81. Bounce in low to Campbell at the base. 15 footer is an air ball by two. Too long. Taken out of the air by Alston. The crowd comes back into the game. Barrows fires again. Gets another one. Timeout. The Lakers. Barrows back to back. Three pointers. And he has got, I believe, six in the game. Five in the game on the Lakers. Ten point lead. Basketball Network. Lakers basketball is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. By Chevrolet and the all new Chevy Blazer. Test drive it at your local Chevy dealer. And by Jack in the Box when you want something better. Well, the Lakers shooting nine out of 18 from three point land. The Sixers five out of nine from three point land. Both clubs shooting better from three point land than from two point. Del Harris is very upset with his club. Very upset, and I don't blame him. Dribble drive and Exel down the middle. The Lakers got to put some people away once in a while instead of having everything come down to the final shot. Van Exel with the ball. Van Exel shoots a three. That will get it done. So the Lakers knock home another three. Van Exel now has got 13 points in the ball game. He has made uh, two three pointers. Here's the ball to Barrows. He tries for his sixth of the game. Didn't get it. Rebound is off. Bowie has got it. Bowie he falls had it. down. Let's hope he didn't hurt himself. No, he didn't. Well, I was afraid of that leg giving out. He's missed over 350 games in his career because of leg injuries. He had them starting at the University of Kentucky. He was drafted into the NBA one pick ahead of Michael Jordan. Well, they've got Bowie guarding uh, Clarence Weatherspoon. If they take Clarence away from the basket in, in isolation, it's going to be trouble. Here's the ball given to Tyler. The Laker lead is 97-84, just under eight minutes left to play. Now down the middle, Barrow shows up on the alley oop and scores. Isn't he a nice player? He's got 30. His career high is 34, and he's going to get that if they leave him in. Well, he's I'm, playing very well for the Sixers. Yeah. All year long. Long pass to the baseline to Sabalas underneath. Reverse layup block control. Great play by Bradley. Stolen underneath. Put it up by Campbell. It's out of bounds. I guess he just threw it out of bounds. They're saying nothing happened. You just missed a shot badly. 
Delay of game, Lakers. Again, if you're going to attack Sean Bradley, you have to jump into his chest. Don't try to be too cute with him because he's got too much size. Uh, shot was blocked by Bradley on Sabalos, and then Eldon Campbell's obviously was blocked as well. You know, Stu, I was pointing out that uh, Bowie had missed over 350 games in his career due to injury, and yeah. by golly, that's, what, over three years. In fact, it's over four seasons. Down the other end now, shot put up. Bowie has not been credited with a block. We know he had two in the third for sure. The last play by uh, Eldon Campbell gets the foul on Tim Perry, who just came into the ball game. Uh, not never has been a real good uh, free throw shooter, so maybe it was a good foul because he is a good jumper. 65 percent in a career. He originally was the number one pick of Phoenix. Seventh player picked in the draft in 88. Played here in town at uh, Temple. This is third year with this club. Phoenix was really, really high on him when they drafted him. All right, it's 97 to 88 to score. And the Los Angeles Lakers better look out. There's seven minutes left to play. If I'm adding it right, that's only a nine point lead. So Alice with the ball. Now out in front to Peeler. Peeler gives to Van Exel. Dribble drive down the middle. Here comes Bradley. Bradley blocks the shot. It's a three on two break. Big time down. Cross court pass. Tyler sets, fires, gets, three pointer. The Lakers are getting into a very bad habit of this. And a lot of it is due to the fact that Vladi Dibot isn't even looked at by the coach now to come in the ball game. 13 to 3 runs, Stu. Well, they've done it because of the defense of Bradley and the outside shooting of their guards on the Lakers basketball network. This copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be transmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. All right, the Lakers make some necessary changes. Scoring run, outscoring the Lakers 13 to 3 in the last three minutes, and the Laker lead is six. It was 16 twice. Van Exel with the ball over to Smith, and he fumbles it out of bounds. Nothing wrong with the pass. Bad play by Smith. Well, the ball, was, the ball was tipped right before it hit Tony's hands. 97 to 91. And the way they're making three pointers, that can be eradicated in 30 seconds. Coming of the ball, Barrows. Barrows in the ball game now with 30 points. Barrows outside. Barrows against Van Exel. Inside playing the post up is Weatherspoon. Down on the floor and no, no whistle. Sabalas fell down. Block shot, goaltending. 97 93. No doubt about that being goaltending. Well, Cedric falls down, and uh, after he fell down, the official said, you might as well get up. I'm not calling the foul. Then the goaltender. That's right. He says, you're doing the flopperoo. That's all. Van Exel with it, and the Lakers need the next basket. We're halfway through the fourth quarter. Van Exel with the ball. Van Exel dribble drive. Van Exel underneath. Reverse layup. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. He not only beat Weatherspoon, but he also, by a half a step, got home before Bradley, Bradley got yeah, there. Yeah, Bradley was on his way. He sure was. Dribble drive, Barrows down the middle. Alley oop is good. 32, two short of his career. 99, 95. 
And the Lakers with the ball once more. Every night it's like this. Dribble drive on Axel underneath. Puts it around Bradley and scores. He had no choice but to put it up after he got by his hip. Well, he just out quick Bradley yep. that time. Bradley was trying to get there, but just does not have the foot speed of Van Axel. 101 to 95. The Lakers. There's a double team on Weatherspoon. Barrows with it in the Weatherspoon. Backing on Sabalas. Gives the ball to Bradley. Underneath. Score. Bradley. 101 to 97. Who's going to miss? 509 to play in regulation. Van Exel dribbling the ball. Van Exel double team. Van Exel brings to Bowie. 20 feet out. Too long. Rebound Bradley. And a holding foul on the Los Angeles Lakers. Eddie Jones. Rebound was by Sean Bradley, and Eddie happened to be in the neighborhood and was just reached in a little bit, and all of a sudden, all of the size of Bradley was all over him. Both clubs with three team fouls. They call the foul on Jones. 101 to 97, fourth quarter. Lakers' biggest lead, 94 to 78. Here's the ball out in front to uh, Harrison at the base. Weatherspoon, shot no good, but the rebound is off to Perry. Tim takes it out of front to Barrows. Barrows is the court director. He's dribbling the ball above the three. Now the ball given off to Tyler. Quick goal dribble through the legs. Go to the base. Still dribbling. Give to Bradley. Down the middle he comes. He's looking for a shot. He's in there three seconds. What's the call? Shot no good. The rebound is off inside. And the foul is on Perry. I don't think these officials can count the three. For heaven's sakes. <laughs> Not three, he was in there seven or eight seconds. <laughs> the only time you stop the call is when he starts his shot, which he had not done. I think somebody must be uh, bleeding. Coming into the ball game is number 21, Derek Alston. They take Bradley out of the game. Yeah, yeah, I think he's got a cut. And the official stopped it and said substitute for him. He's got a broken nose and maybe it got banged. That's what I think it is, and I, I believe they're mopping it. All right, anyway, the Lakers' lead is four points, 4.09 to play. Sabalas has got it. No time for fate of heart. Pass underneath Smith. A great pass to Bowie. What a pass by Tony. You had to have great velocity on the ball. Yes, if you try to float that one under there, it gets picked off. There wasn't that much of an opening. Tony Smith with the great pass, Bowie with the catch. And the finish, and the Lakers now lead it by six on the Lakers Basketball Network. God damn these headsets. What's the matter? They fall off. My head is lopsided. Say again? Yeah. What about that other kid? What about Jones? Yeah. Well, let's wait a while. You got four minutes to play. You might have a real player of the game. Yeah, the other kid I was talking about was uh, Dana Barrels. He's been pretty good. Sure has. But he's on the losing team, you're saying? <laughs> oh, that's up to you then. If you want then to you to become the, the laughing stock of the basketball world. Oh, I'm sure of that. Who doesn't want to do it? Did Vladi play in the second half? Yeah, a couple minutes. Bradley's coming back in with the Lakers up by six with exactly four minutes to play. Bowie tonight has his season high for points, 13, and he has tied his season high for rebounds, 10. John Bradley's not doing badly. He's got 15 points, nine rebounds, and about 106 uh, deflected shots. And he's back in the ballgame. All right, with the ball, we got Tyler, double teamed. He comes down the middle, gives the old man Barrows. He fakes. That's a 15-foot two-pointer. In and out, stays out. Rebound, Tim Perry. Back to Barrows, knocked away and out of bounds. Last touch by Barrows. Good hands by Van Exel. 
But Tim Perry made that, that turnover possible. When he got the offensive rebound, I think he should have tried to take it back up. He didn't even look to and tried to pitch it out to, uh, to Dana Barrow. 17 turnovers for the Sixers, 14 for the Lakers. Well, that isn't the real story of the turnovers. I'll give you that. Here's the ball over to Sabalas. Dribble drive in the air. Bank shot. It goes in. Everybody stopped. Everybody stopped and caught the foul. The Lakers had nine, nine turnovers in the first 36 minutes, and they have had five now in the last eight minutes. 105-97, the ball out to Bradley. Traveling is called on Weatherspoon. And the Laker lead is 105-97, eight-point lead. Remember, when they uh, have had the opponent score 100 points, they've lost 15 out of 16, and the Lakers are over 100. The Lakers are right what they're averaging on the year, 105. Now the ball given off to Sabalas. He's guarded by Bradley, double teamed by Weatherspoon. The ball to Bowie, out in front of Van Exel. Nine on the clock, lots of time. Three minutes to play. Van Exel has the ball knocked loose by Weatherspoon. He gets it down the floor to Barrels. Two teammates coming. Barrels shoot the three and gets it. That was a big turnover because he converts it into a three-point basket. That cuts the lead down to five. With the ball, Jones. Jones in the front court. Jones gives the ball to Sabalas. Down the middle underneath to Smith. Travel. Bradley and Smith did the bunny hop and the pee pad. That's called intimidation. Easy play to call. The Tony Lakers Smith. have their sixth turnover. Tony Smith catches that ball and he looks up and he says, uh-oh, seven foot six, huh? I better do a little dance. There was no music, Tony. Barros has a new career high, 35 points. He's got 13 in this important fourth quarter. Two and a half to play. 105 to 100, the Lakers. Here is Tyler, loses it off his own leg and retrieves. Tyler is so quick. Tyler above the three-point line. Around a pick by Bradley. Pick and roll to Bradley. Gives it to him. Did he come underneath the score? Yes. 105-102. Lakers have given up five straight points. Van Exel with the ball in the front court. Left hand, 16-footer on the way. No. Rebound is off to Weatherspoon. They're down by three, under two minutes to play. It's nervous time at the Spectrum. Here's Barrows, 35 points. New career high. Down the middle he goes and deep. Now Weatherspoon to Tyler for three. No good. Rebound hit to the sideline where it's grabbed by Tyler. Out of front of Barrows with six three-pointers already in the bank. Dribble drive in deep. Baseline, they clear for three. Shot, no good, Weatherspoon. Rebound to Smith. 1.30 to play, and the Lakers dodged a couple of bullets. Three of them. <laughs> 1.24 left. First time my headset ever fell off during a game. You said your head, you said your head was lopsided. Well, the trouble is, my head was in it. Here's the ball to Sabalos, dribble drive at the base. They knock it loose, picked up by Jones, three-pointer, no. Rebound is off with 1.09 to play. We got a three-point ball game, and a timeout is called. 20-second timeout. Philadelphia, 20-second timeout. Back on the Lakers basketball network. Tony Smith is limping. Go with what? All right. That's still good. Huh? Is your headset still a problem? It fell on the floor. You were watching the game. Swallow checks in for the Sixers for Scott Williams. They bring in the big guy, Sharon Wright. They take Bradley out. No, they don't take him out. He's going to take the ball out of bounds. They got both big men in. Timeouts left. The Lakers two plus a 20. Philadelphia one left. One minute to play. Barrows with a three to tie it. Barrows, the inbound pass, and they get a basket. The Lakers are playing much unlike they played in the third quarter. The Sixers lead it with 52 seconds, 107-105. Timeout, the Lakers, 49 and a half seconds left. 
If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it, Stu. Well, when the Lakers went up by 16 points or so, I think they thought the ball game was over, and they just did not deliver the knockout punch. They left their opponent standing, and if you do that, you're in, you can be in some trouble, and the Lakers are now in some trouble. Dana Barrows knocked down the three that tied it up, and then on the inbounds pass, Cedric Zabala threw it, intending it to go to Nick Van Exel. B.J. Tyler stepped in, picked it off, scored. Goaltending was called because the ball touched the glass, and Eddie Jones blocked it. That's automatic goaltend. 107, 105, 49 and a half seconds. Well, our Pacific Bell short shot player of the game, Dana Barrows, a career high 38 points, 13 out of 20 from the field. Pacific Bell short shot player of the game. Seven out of 11 three pointers. Philadelphia trailed by eight with 244 to play. And now they have outscored the Lakers 10 to nothing to lead. Van Exel with it. Can the Lakers get another heroic? game tonight. Van Exel underneath. He's fouled. Bradley is complaining. You shouldn't complain on one like that, big fella. You got him with a body. Well, Nick did a good job of making up the space between himself and Sean Bradley. That's five fouls on Bradley. If Nick doesn't make up the space, Bradley uh, blocks that shot very easily. Jumps right into Sean Bradley. He makes sure he gets the contact. Then he releases. The free throw is good. He's made four out of five tonight. He's got 16 points. He can tie the game with 40 and four tenths seconds left. He missed. Rebound is off. Grabbed by the big man, Williams. Well, you need a defensive stop here because you're only down one. Don't want to foul. With the ball in the front court, Dana Barrows. 29 seconds left. 107, 106, the Sixers. Out in front, we got Barrows with it. Pick and roll, no, he turns the corner. He comes underneath the alley, oops up and in. Whoa, what a great play. What a great game. 20 seconds left, 109, 106. And the Los Angeles Lakers have been buried by Barrows. 18 in the fourth quarter, 40 in the game, Stu. Yeah, it's been their backcourt that's hurt them offensively, but it's been Sean Bradley that's contributed as well, along with Sharon Wright. But Dana Barrows has really done the job. You can't let Dana Barrows turn the corner with his right hand. You have to make him turn the corner with his left hand, and the Lakers have not done that tonight at all. On both ends of the floor, he's looking to turn to his right hand. Force him to go the other way, and you can cut down his effectiveness quite a bit. The Lakers will look at the film tonight or tomorrow, and they'll say, why didn't we do that? 109-106. And I'll tell you, Barrows has been superlative. He's been better than that. <laughs> And he's got his team with a three-point lead, 19.9 seconds to play. If the Sixers play it smart, that's two possessions for them, for the Lakers to catch up if they don't commit a foul in the act of shooting and they don't let the three-point shot go down. 40 points for Barrows. He's made 18 in the fourth quarter. That's as many as the Lakers team has in the fourth quarter. Exactly. Boy, I'll tell you, in that huddle, he might be a little guy, but he stands out as a big man. He's only 5 feet 11. And the Laker huddle, Del Harris, Chick, what you got to do now is pray. Well, Chick, no, I, everyone's thinking they're going to go for a three. You do not go for a three here, Chick, unless it's absolutely wide open. What you do is take the quick deuce and, and then commit foul. a foul. Yep. Because they may miss one of the two free throws, and then you're only down two. And if they miss it, or if they make two, then you're still back to needing the three. But and I on think the you foul, you might possibly deuce. get a steal. Ball out of bounds at midcourt. Zabalos has it. He'll bring it into. Well, he throws it. What's going on? Ball batted away by Weatherspoon. 19 and 4, 10 seconds left. Zabalos brings it into Campbell. He's under the basket. He scores. Smart now, play. that's a great play. Timeout, Philadelphia. That's a good play. 109, 108. Now the Lakers can commit an intentional foul if they have to, and they do have to. Yeah. 
take the quick deuce, and then keep the ball out of Dana Barrows' hand. Cedric Zabala looks up, spots Eldon. Eldon takes it up. You knew they weren't going to foul in that situation because they didn't want a three-point play to tie the game, so you get the easy deuce. And uh, Cedric did a good job of faking to the front, and that got his defender out of position. Then Eldon was wide open for the easy one. Now the Lakers will look to see who they want to foul. They do not want to foul either one of the guards. You force one of the big players to come to the basketball, and then you foul him. 17 and 6 tenths seconds left. The Lakers have been outscored 12 to 1 prior to that last basket here in the last two minutes and 20 seconds. Now they've been outscored 12 to 3, allowing the uh, 76ers to come from behind. Remember the Lakers with 244 left in the game, led by eight, and that's when they went to sleep. Well, and credit thing, Philadelphia. Yeah, one they never quit. Do, they hung in there tough. You do not want to go to sleep at all as long as there's time left on the clock. We've got timeout remaining. The Lakers have one timeout. The Sixers are out of timeouts. So the Lakers, the only thing they have left is the one full timeout. Eddie Jones over in the huddle nods his head in assent. Sam Bowie looking on with him. That was a nice play. Campbell had a choice there. Either shoot it himself or give it off to Van Exel who was standing under the basket unguarded. Yeah, he did the right thing. You never want to make an extra pass. No. You don't have to. He's 6'11". He wants to ride that one home, and he did. They're going to move it to midcourt. Now you've got Rayer is in. You foul either Weatherspoon or Bradley. Those are the two guys that you force to go to get the basketball. You make sure the other guys are well defended. Got to get it in in a five count. Got to get it in in a five count. Ball knocked loose. Foul on Campbell. That's a good foul. I'm sure, he's hollering about it. He thought he could get an interception. They had the foul to give, so they had to give it real fast. Real fast. They, so gave, now, it, they gave it in a yeah, second. Now they have to do the same thing, forcing Bradley to come to the ball or Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon almost traveled. Here's a foul on Bowie. Now Weatherspoon will go to the line. How good a free thrower is he? Pretty darn good. 76%. If he makes them both, you still got 15 seconds to get your three. He has not shot a free throw tonight. Averages 18 points a game. Del Harris. Free throw looks good. It is good. Two point ball game. He looked awfully comfortable on that shot, Chick. Awfully comfortable. And then that one goes in and comes out. The rebound is time out the Lakers. Four, let's ball call it 15 Lakers. seconds. 14.8. The Lakers will have the ball at midcourt, Stu. What will they do? Now they've got an option of things to do. They're only down by two. That's why you didn't want to take the three-pointer a while ago. Just get the quick deuce. With two, uh, with only down two points, you can run in 14, almost 15 seconds. You can run any play that you want to run as far as a go-to play and hope to get your deuce. And then on the double team, you still have time to spot up Nick Van Nixel or maybe Eddie Jones for the three-pointer and uh, win it that way. So the Lakers are in fine shape as far as time is concerned and the deficit. Timeouts remaining zip. Yeah, this is it now. You play it with what's left. Now, that's an important point here. If they cover sufficiently, you don't have a timeout to rely on. you got to get it in in the five-second count. That's why you always have to make sure on your ball club yep. you have one guy that takes the ball out, and he's very good at decisions, and he's very good at inbounding the basketball. We'll have a show on radio on a wrap-up basis. With 9.49 left in this quarter, the Lakers led by 16, 94 to 78. But in the next three minutes and 20 seconds, Philadelphia outscored them 15 to 3 to get within four. Then the Lakers went up by eight, 105-97, three and a half to play, seemed to be under control. But Philadelphia came back with a 10 to nothing run. And then they led, uh, they came with a 12 to 1 lead. And that's 109-106. We'll see what happens now. But well, I think the Lakers are going to get put in a position where they're going to have to make two free throws. I do too. Exactly what I think. 
because they're going to run a play. I think they're going to try to attack. Bradley or somebody is going to either block the shot cleanly, of course, or commit the foul. And uh, if the foul is committed, of course, they're going to go to the line. And boy, if that happens, you talk about pressure free throws. Yeah, the Lakers aren't really a good free throwing team. None of them. And you look at the players that they have on the floor right now. Uh, of course, Elton Campbell, not a real good free throw shooter. Cedric Sabalas, 71 percenter. Eddie Jones, Nick Van Essel, and Sam Bowie, the best free throw shooters on the floor for the Lakers. Uh, Sam Bowie will take the ball in at 7-1. He'll be defended by 7-6 Sean Bradley. Look at that. 7-1. He looks like a jockey. Inbound to Van Exel. Van Exel to the dribble. 12 seconds left. 11. Van Exel underneath. Throws it up and in! Nine and a half seconds. No timeouts left. No timeouts left. Defense! Here comes uh, Tyler. Tyler down the middle. No foul. And throws it out of bounds. The clock stops with 3.6. No timeouts for either team. What a great shot that little Van Exel made. We said in the opening remarks that you want the guy that wants the ball to have it. And now, I tell you, Nick wants it too, boy. I don't think the Lakers will get another shot off. I Van Exel with it. Van Exel one second. He's got to shoot it right now. Six tenths. It's on the way. No good. Overtime. The Lakers got to settle for happiness but getting an overtime out of that stew. Well, of course, they're very ecstatic about being in overtime based on what was happening just a few seconds ago. So the Lakers now know we've got five minutes to reassert ourselves and let this team know that it was our misfortunes, our lapse of play that enabled them to come back from the 16-point deficit as Nick Van Exel just takes it off the dribble, changes direction, goes all the way in, and that little quick shot off off the glass that he's got mastered is the one that tied it up. That's a great play by Nick Van Exel. Now, five minutes to play. Sean Bradley has five fouls. That's a deciding factor because on the defensive end, Boy, that's he a good shot. has been a big-time player. The last shot had no chance. Uh, when you're in the backcourt with the ball and uh, three seconds left, you've got very little chance of shooting it any place in the front court if they are playing any defense at all. But the Lakers escape is what I would say now. First Philadelphia escape. Now the Lakers have. I believe in overtime. Correct me. I don't have the stats on it that the Lakers are one and one this year. Is that true? Yeah, there it is. I didn't know that. The well, Lakers are one and one. The Sixers have been in one overtime game and they have yet to get victory in that overtime uh, period. So this will be the second one for them. Boy, I'll tell you, I knew with the score tied 1-10, 1-10, coming into this game that Barrows was a very good player. I didn't know he was this good. On the year, he's averaging 19 points a game. Tonight, well, he's a little better. He had 40 points, made seven three-pointers, well, and with, he made 18 points in the fourth quarter. When he was with Seattle last season and before, it was almost like they just used him as a three-point right. shooter ex uh, exclusively, spot him up behind the line, et cetera, and let him do that. But now, starting here in Philadelphia, he's showcasing all of his offense, and he's getting it done on the year, averaging 19 points and eight assists. Has a career high tonight, and I mean, he has really hurt the Lakers from long range. That year, last year, at Seattle, he averaged 13 points, five assists. He was the number one pick of Seattle in 89, 16th player picked in the draft. Now, the Lakers have Campbell and Bowie. They have got uh, Van Exel and uh, Jones, and they have um, Sabalos. The Sixers take Tim Perry out and bring in the big man, Sharon Wright. At center, they should control it with Bradley jumping. And the ball is tipped by Campbell. He out jumped Bradley. Great play by Eldon Campbell. Great spring. Van Exel with it. Van Exel in deep. Van Exel's left hand 17 footer won't be close. The rebound is off under the basket. It's a free ball picked up by Sabalas. He's fouled. Foul is by Bradley. Is that his six? That's it. That's six. I'll tell you one thing. You see how quickly Sabalas makes his decision. Take the shot. Don't think about it. Take it. And that quickness caused Sean Bradley some trouble and he also jumped into the chest of Bradley that's what you want to do Nick misses the shot and in the scramble Eldon Campbell does a good job of keeping it on down there Zavalas uh, picks it up he's fouled he's at the line to give the Lakers 
the lead. Bradley fouls out with 17 points, nine rebounds, and six blocks. Tim Perry comes in the lineup. That means that Wright will be the center. Free throws, big ones. Every free throw in overtime is monumental. Free throw is no good. Sabalos misses. Well, 447. Got, yeah, that's the key. They still have 447 to play, and their defensive specialist is out of the game. The Lakers take the lead again. 111 to 110. 445 to play. Coming out of the backcourt, we've got Dana Oakbaris. In playing the low post is Weatherspoon. Perry's got it to Barrows and over to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon back out to Barrows. Nine on the 24. They give to Grayer. He's down the middle. He's in too deep. Bank shot, no. Rebound, Sabalas volleyballed it, and it's taken by Van Exel. Great play by Sabalas. Beautiful play against Bigger Penn. I tell you, he was uh, very instrumental in that sequence. He was double teaming both yep. Barrows and Weatherspoon. Van Exel with the ball in the front court, leading by one in the overtime. Here's the ball out in front to Jones. Jones takes it into Campbell. Double team on Campbell. Campbell back to Jones. Jones to Van Exel. Open is Sabalas. Oh, a 40-footer. Van Exel, he must have seen the clock. I didn't see it. They wouldn't shoot one like that without the clock running out, would he? I don't think so. All right, here with the ball in the front court. Barry, let him Barrows. his right again. Barrows out in front to Weatherspoon. They want to go to Barrows. He's your go-to guy. You know that. He's got eight on the 24. There's the screen. There's a pick and roll. Dribble drive, Weatherspoon, 16-footer, good. And the Sixers lead, 112-111. I don't understand that last shot unless he was running out of time. I couldn't see the 24. So we'll see what they do this time there. Here's the dribble drive. Van Exel takes it over to Sabalas. Three-pointer by Sabalas. Be short. Rebound is off. Perry has got it. The Lakers are taking some very suspect shots. We've still got 315 to play, Stu. Yeah, there's still a lot of time left. You don't want to get three-point happy, but at the same time, now they have to play the defense. 112, 111, 305 to play in the five-minute overtime. Barrow's pass is to Grayer and a foul. The foul is on Eddie Jones. That resets the 24. That's the bad part of that foul. Well, only down by one in three minutes to play. Uh, the Lakers are in fine shape as far as both the score and the time is concerned, but they just have to make sure they start getting some uh, some real good looks at the basket, yes. maybe a little closer. Yes. All right, the ball given to Barrows. With Bradley out of there, they shouldn't be really looking to shoot the ball from distance that much. Barrows out in front with 16 in the 24. Ball comes over to Grayer. Dribble drive around everybody. Blocked by Campbell, and it bounces out to Barrows. Oh, they were very fortunate. A great block shot by Campbell. Dribble drive, Barrows again. Alley-oop, six-footer, no. Rebound is up. Taken by Wright. He puts it up and misses it. And the Lakers luckily, luckily avoid a basket. Rebound taken by Sabalos. Well, let's see where they Two go and a half with the to basket play. this time. If they shoot a three, I'd be very shocked. I don't think they will. I think they'll either get the ball inside or let Cedric penetrate off the dribble. All right, we got the ball to Jones. 2.20 to play. One-point lead, Philadelphia. Three-pointer on the way. Not good. So they've taken three three-pointers in a row. And if that is good basketball offensively, I'm a monkey's uncle. 112 to 111, and I've been accused of that, too. 2.07 to play. Sure, if it goes in, it's great, but it didn't go in any one of the three. Ball to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon almost traveled. The Perry. Perry comes underneath. Slam dunk. Time out. The Lakers down by three. 154 to play. Stu? Well, the Lakers, I thought, were in the driver's seat when Sean Bradley fouled out, but they haven't taken advantage on the Lakers basketball network.
Say again, Susan. Okay. Well, the uh, Sixers aren't settling for three-point baskets. Their last basket was an attack <laughs> by Tim Perry as he dunked over Sam Bowie. He took it to the rack, and he took it there with some power. Didn't get the foul called in his favor, but he says, I'll settle for the do. In this, in the overtime period, the Lakers are nothing for four, three of which have been from long distance. Their last the three have been from long five. distance, yeah. and that's the surprising thing. If Bradley was in there, you might understand yeah. it. But you got to attack. Dribble drive Sabalas. Down the middle Sabalas. Could go. It didn't go. He was fouled. Boy, that almost went. That's the now, way they should have attacked. Why, of course. Three minutes ago. 144 to play. Bradley fouled out with what? 444 or so to play in the overtime period. As Cedric takes Sean, or excuse me, uh, Clarence Weatherspoon off the dribble. Doesn't get the ball to fall for him, but he's back to the line for two. Makes it 114 to 112. The Lakers have two points in the overtime in three minutes and 16 seconds. Both of them free throws by Sabalos. That's 24. That's 30 points for Sabalos. He makes them both. 31 back to back nights for Sabalos. One point ball game, 142 to play. And with the ball, we got it out in front to Grayer. Grayer holds it up. The Lakers need a stop for sure. The ball over to Barrows. He never stops running. Nope. Barrows turned the corner. Give the ball off to Campbell. Back over to Weatherspoon. Drives in deep. Beats everybody. Shot is blocked by Bowie. They reset the 24. It must have hit the rim. Yeah, it hit the rim. Yeah, all right. And now 118 to play. And we got Barrows holding the ball. This Lakers is, are down by one. This is the time you need to stop because with the clock at 110 on the game clock. They score here. Here we go. Seven seconds on the 24. Barrels wow. along the baseline, and a foul is called on Eddie Jones. Ball will come out of bounds, but the important thing is it resets the 24. They just, I, I know this, they're going to really be upset with themselves the amount of times they've allowed Dana Barrels to turn the corner. the corner with his right hand. Yep. All right, waiting for the ball to come into Barrels. One minute left in the overtime. He is not One nearly as effective game. going to his left. No. Not nearly. He's no Sedale Street. And with the ball out of front, Barrels letting the clock run down. We're down to 10 seconds in the 24, 49 in the game clock. Barrels with the ball. Barrels, there he goes, there back, he goes yeah. to his left, go to the baseline. He's in trouble now. He throws up a prayer. Somebody ought to rebound it for the Lakers, but they don't. Tim Perry gets it. 36 seconds left. No foul. No and foul. The Los Angeles Lakers trailing by one. 30 seconds left. Barrows with the ball here in overtime. Chick Hearn with Stu Lance. And Barrows with 24 seconds left, but only 10 on the 24. Barrows with seven. Weatherspoon to win the game, perhaps. Shot no good. Rebound is volleyball out again. 16 seconds left. Now they have you got to foul him. You got to foul him, but you don't want to foul Bar Barrows because he's a 90 percenter. You do. You got to foul whoever is available. That's what they did. And he'll make them both. The biggest weakness in the Lakers team has reared his head again. Rebounding. They just let three shots go where they did not secure the defensive rebound. And now they're in a position to put Dana Barrows at the line to shoot two. He's the 90 percenter. That last one tipped by Tim Perry. And that was the one that may have broken the Lakers back. Tonight he's a 100 percent shooter till that one. That's the first one he's missed in six tries. Now with 10 and 7, 10 seconds left. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever get to Charlotte. I don't really care. If they lose this one, it'll really put a damper on the road trip. Free throw good, two point ball game. Timeout the Lakers. 115 to 113. Lakers are trailing with, let's call it 11 seconds left in overtime on the Lakers basketball network. Bear is 41 now.
Lakers have one timeout remaining. So the Sixers with three timeouts remaining. Well, the last possession for the 76ers, they really milked the clock. After Cedric Sabalas made two free throws, the 76ers took a minute and 35 seconds off the clock because they were offensive rebounding. The first shot went up. The Lakers couldn't secure it. Tim Perry got it, threw it out to Weatherspoon. They got another 24. Then Dana Barros went to work again. The Lakers are still in good position, and they got two offensive rebounds, two more offensive rebounds in that sequence. The Lakers have had every break there is in overtime. Bradley 7-6 fouls out and Barrows misses his 16th free throw of the season. Eight seconds left. Sabalas dribble drive down the middle, throws it up. It's no good. The rebound is off. Comes way out on the floor. Van Exel is going to get it. Two seconds. Game's over. There will be with nine seconds left. It's off Van Exel and out of bounds. The Lakers lose in overtime. Boy, this is going to be one they're going to think about for a long time. Timeout is called by Philadelphia. Nine tenths of a second left. 115 to 113. The Lakers in the overtime made three free throws. And that was after Bradley had fouled out. I tell you. You know, you second guess all the time, but this is one where they are really going to second guess. Uh, Cedric got to the basket, didn't get the call. The Lakers tried to rebound it, tipped it out. And as Nick looked up to see how much time was left, he lost control of the basketball, and it goes out of bounds. Uh, the Lakers got really what they wanted, some penetration off the dribble, trying to get the whistle. They didn't get the whistle. They didn't get the basket. They didn't get the basketball. What they did get, probably, was an L. A loss. Yes, that's what they got. And uh, tonight, the miracle is on Broad Street in Philadelphia. Last night, it was in Boston in favor of the Lakers. In the overtime period, the uh, Lakers did not make a field goal. Nothing for five. They had free throws, and the Sixers, two out of six from the field. Stu, they were shooting not only three-point attempts deep. And now, yeah, if you're up at the 22-foot line, that isn't bad. But out where they were shooting them, impossible. You're not going to get any percentage. And I, I think the Lakers got to blame themselves on this. Oh, there's no question. I mean the whole group. Not about the overtime shooting. No. I'm talking about from the time they were up 16 points, that's when they relaxed, went to sleep, so to speak, and the 76ers took over. They had two runs, the Sixers did. 15 to 3. That brought them from 94 78 to 97 93. And then the Lakers went up by 8, but Philly came back with a 10 to nothing run. So this is the second time in 17 games at home that they have beaten a team who has scored at least 100. You know, a minimum of three tenths of a second is going to go off the clock just with possession. Just so, with possession, yep. Boy, the Lakers are in a They're bad in trouble. Way. Pass underneath the Weatherspoon. He's got it in the foul on Van Exel, but the game ended. No, it didn't. Now they're going to call the foul. They're going to put at least a tenth or two back in the clock, and there will be free throws taken by Weatherspoon. The only people this could affect would be Las Vegas. Does this game, the L and the W, have been decided? Two tenths of a second. Two tenths of a second. Personal foul. Harvey is coming in the ball game for the Lakers. What a difference 24 hours can make, huh? Uh, that shouldn't even have been the case tonight. Jim. Now you're going to play the best team that you have to face on the four-game trip, Charlotte. The Lakers had this one in the bag with a 16-point lead. They just had to deliver the knockout punch, and they didn't. Thanks to our great crew. Now this reminds uh, me, Jim, this game reminds me of a young basketball team. The teams that, you know, when you're young like that, you, yeah. you, you, you take certain things for granted and uh, you just can't. You relax, especially on the road. Two tenths of a second left. First free throw is good by Weatherspoon. 16 to 13. Might want to miss this one on purpose. He made it. 170 to 113. The Lakers take a timeout that'll do them absolutely no good. All these yeah. Sixers will do is give the Lakers any concession yeah. basket they want. Any concession basket they want. It's all over. From a strategic standpoint, though, Chick, I, if I'm the 76ers, 
I missed the second free yeah, throw I on too. purpose because yep. on a rebound, yep. you're going to take off three tenths of a second minimum. They only have two tenths. Game would have expired. I am going to tell you the truth, and I very seldom do this, Stu, but I have figures on what the Lakers' home and away records are and so forth. And I had changed it when they were up by 16 in the third, and uh, I've got to erase it and change it back. This will be the Lakers' ninth loss in 20 games on the road instead of their 12th win against eight losses on the road. And the Lakers' record, instead of going to uh, 20. Four and 12 will stay at 23 and go to 13 in the loss column. It's a great victory for Philadelphia. They battled, they worked, they got the uh, kind of uh, heroics from Barros that the Lakers got from uh, three of their guys last night. I want to hear all the stories about Vladi Divac and why he didn't play and when he did play why he didn't play more effectively. You know if you're the 76ers now chick you uh, you talk about stand steel defense you don't even guard anybody. Of course not. It's what I'm talking <laughs> about concession. You don't even guard anybody. I know even if they throw it terrible. in Tiffany and the clock expires. Yep. Two tenths of a second. Pass underneath Harvey tips it. The game's over it didn't go in. And the Sixers. Surprise, upset the Los Angeles Lakers. And boy, does that put a, a big crimp in this four game stand. Now you got to win against the best team that you're going to face in the four game stand down at Charlotte Monday night. Back with more in a minute. The Lakers lose in overtime 117 to 113. On Prime. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I've got something that'll excite you so much you won't be able to stand still. So get your friends and make sure you sit where you can see because you don't want to miss this prelude to a kiss on NBA action. Let's do this together, man. We did it all year together. Let's do it now. Let's go. One, two, three, rock it. Penny Hardaway. begin this week's action reel with a streaking Charlotte Hornets who attribute their recent success to staying healthy and feeling happy. Right now we're playing pretty good basketball and, and uh, you can tell that our team has good chemistry and they're fun to be around as a coach. But the Cavs found out that the Hornets aren't so much fun to be around if you're the opposition. Alonzo Morning led all scores in this overtime win as the Hornets beat the Cavs for the first time ever in Cleveland. Back in Charlotte, the Timberwolves got in their face, but it would be all Larry Johnson. He would rack up his fourth career triple-double as the Hornets stayed on fire. And the Hornets have established a new team record. Ten straight wins at home. Seven straight wins overall, which is a team record. They up both those records by one when the Chicago Bulls came to town. And this time, they did it by playing great D. Our defense has really got us out of some jams. You know, it's been a long time coming since we can score 80, 90 points and win a ball game. Their win over Chicago put the Hornets a half game behind Cleveland for the lead in the Central. The searching Seattle Supersonics ended a five-game road trip at Golden State and won an OT thanks to the long-range touch of Sam Perkins. Perkins again. Oh, brother. Second in overtime. The Sonics returned home, riding a four game winning streak. And they came out and dominated the LA Clippers by running on offense and swarming on defense. Matheson draws a new team. Sonics are everywhere. Looks like there are six Sonics out there. I think they, we all understand that this road trip, the road trip that we just got off, has got, given us an opportunity to have a great month. And uh, let's get ready for Portland. And ready they were. The Sonics blitzed the Blazers for 131 points. 
Detlef Schrempf picked up his 10,000th career point as he, Gary Payton, and Sean Kemp each scored over 20. In Utah, Jerry Sloan's Jazz are red hot, thanks in large part to the torrid shooting of guard Jeff Hornacek. Against the Nuggets, he was looking to tie the NBA record for consecutive three-pointers at 11. And he got it with this ball. That ties the NBA record. Hornacek in a zone. And so are the Jazz. After their win versus Denver, Utah hit the road where they'd won nine straight. Oh, make that 10 straight as they knocked off the Celtics. We know that we're going to have a tough game when we're on the road. Sometimes when we're at home, we just think we're going to win and show up, and we don't execute, and uh, uh, we, we've let a couple games slip away. But on the road, we know we can't do that. Next up was New York, and the Knicks were riding a winning streak of their own. But Carl Malone would end that as the Jazz won and impressed the opposition. I think right now they're the best basketball team in the league at playing the game. Uh, they may not be as good as Orlando or, or maybe Phoenix, but from playing the game right now over the last 26 games, they're 21 and 5, 12 and 0 on the road. There isn't anybody better. But it hasn't all been smooth for the Jazz, as we find out in this week's news, notes, and quotes. Starting center Felton Spencer, who has been instrumental in the team's success, has been lost for the season with a torn Achilles tendon. That's a, a tough break. You know, he's uh, really our, our only big man. So uh, uh, it's a big blow to us, but uh, uh, things like that happen. We just have to fight through it. Their divisional rival, the Denver Nuggets, also had a major shakeup when Coach Dan Issel announced his resignation. I think the duties and the, uh, and the pressure of this position have uh, started to make me something I don't want to be. While Issel will stay with the organization, they've elevated assistant Gene Littles to lead the young, rising Nuggets. I think this year there is expectations in the Nuggets. And I think it was tough for Dan not to feel like the team was giving the fans the expectation. Expectations heightened that Mark Price could become the third man in history to win three consecutive AT&T long-distance shootouts. When it was announced, he'd head this year's field all-star Saturday night in Phoenix. Price's crown will be up for grabs as he competes against the likes of Orlando's Nick Anderson, Sixer Dana Barrows, Charlotte Scott Burrell, who leads the league in long-range accuracy, Steve Kerr of the Bulls, hometown favorite son, Thunder Dan Marley, Reggie Miller of the Pacers, and the Miami Heat's Glenn Rice. Coming up next, the Pacers' Mark Jackson will be holding court. You know, my father once told me, find a job you love, and you'll never have to work another day in your life. And there's much more in store in this week's edition of NBA Encore. The Tombo Rogers look down. Tommy Tolbert, look at that hairdo. Me and my wife went to get her haircut, and she's always wanted to get it dyed platinum. So she didn't want to do it that day, so she just looked at me and said, why don't you get it done? <laughs> All right, I kind of enjoy doing it. And no, it's not because Dennis says it. No, no, no. Now the answer to this week's trivia question. We know this was a tough one, but the team who holds the record for most consecutive overtime games lost is the Golden State Warriors, who dropped an incredible 10 straight overtime games from October 79 through March of 81. Last season, Houston's Akeem Olajuwon was the NBA's MVP. This year, the fire still burns, and it was never more apparent than when the Rockets hosted David Robinson and the Spurs this week. Down to Olajuwon, working on David. A little fade away by Akeem for two. Kenny Smith turns the corner. Nice pass off Olajuwon baseline, yes. Olajuwon going to go baseline in the rhythm. Rhythm in the rain. 19 points for Akeem Olajuwon, and we're only in the first quarter. San Antonio, you are in trouble. Team Elijah on to the middle, puts up the shot. Oh, my goodness. 31 points for Hakeem Elijah on. After setting a new career high for points and a half, the dream continued the Admiral's nightmare in the third quarter. And now Hakeem with a jumper. What can he not do? Hakeem now has 19 40-point games in his career. Harry Cummings wants to get a little closer. It's stolen by Hakeem. He's got Robert Ory on the right side. Alley-oop to the three for two. With 10 rebounds, three blocks, and a steal to go with his season-high 47 points, the dream had Rockets TV announcer Calvin Murphy singing his praises post-game. I'm not going to keep him any longer. I know he's ready to, to get in there and get dressed. We got a nice watch for you, but I want you to know I am so proud to be standing next to the greatest basketball player in the world, Hakeem the Dream Elijah. Let's hear it for him. 
While Akeem's status as the best player in the world is open for debate, there's no question that Scott Burrell is on.